is a massive MIMO C band 64D64R radios. Um, this is the one that interfaces with the VDU. Um, Verizon has deployed close to 30,000 of them right now in the network used for ultra wideband. So one of the uh, best products you, you, you see a very minimal interface, um, just the fiber lines directly go into the VDU. So this is one sector, right? This is one sector, okay. yes. They What's the difference between the two units? Yeah. Alpha, beta, gamma. Sorry? Yeah. What's the difference between the, the two, two units? Yeah, this one is a CBRS version. Okay. Um, yes. And this is a C band version. Operates in the mid band um, in the 3.7 gigahertz range. This is in the 3.5 gigahertz to 3.7 gigahertz for the CBRS. And are those different wattage outputs? Uh, different what? Wattage outputs for the power output level. Power. Output, output power. Output power, uh, the wattage output is 320 watts. On both? This on both, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. CBRS is lower, right? Um, is CBRS, big? you can go lower. CBRS, yeah. you can go lower. Okay. Um, typically, um, for um, the other products that we have on CBRS, you have to make sure that the SAS, you know, the incumbents, you don't okay. interfere with mm -hmm. them, so yeah. they are configured at a lower power. CBRS is 20 watts for that one. Yeah. Yeah. You said 30,000, did I get that number right? How many, how many did you say Verizon had deployed? 30,000. 30,000. Yeah. 10,000. Yeah. 10,000. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, This is also a C-band product that Verizon has deployed right now. It's the 88R version. Eight transmit paths, eight, eight receive paths. And the um, RF jumper is basically connect to the antenna here. But this is the 88R variant they are using on the N77 C-band frequency. That's one of the product. Um, this is a tri-band 44R, operates in 600, 700, 800 megahertz range. Pretty much, uh, you know, um, DISH is, is making use of um, certain frequencies in the 600 band right now, mm -hmm. um, but it is capable of supporting three, three bands. So um, all this uh, product, this one is a 320 watt uh, product, 44R. Um, this is a high high radio, also in the AWS PCS frequencies, uh, band four and band two. Verizon uses this on a great deal in the LTE network. Um, it's it's got dedicated paths for AWS, four paths, dedicated paths for the PCS. Uh, Verizon calls it the high high radio. We also have the low low version of this, which is in the 700 850 megahertz range. Verizon uses it all throughout their network for LTE. Um, this is a CBRS 44R. Um, benefit of this is it also comes with a clip-on antenna. So, you know, you don't have to interface it with an external antenna. This is already having a clip-on right here. Um, so CBRS, the entire network that Verizon is um, currently deploying, um, makes use of uh, the CBRS with with a clip-on or without a clip-on, just based on the deployment. Um, again, um, all our CBRS uh, deployment, um, you know, make sure that we follow all the SAS dependencies mm -hmm. and nothing interferes, so it's a very advanced algorithm. How many is Verizon deployed to that? We have a lot, pretty much. Uh, on the 4G side right now, we have completed 10,000 LTE sites, and all of them have CBRS solution and layers. So it's a massive deployment. That's the same unit that is? That is the same unit right there. Huh. And this, this is the new Second one, second. the strand that we talked about, which is shown here on the overhead cable, um, taps in to the DOCSIS interface. It's called um, Digital Lower Cable. Um, services, integrated services. Uh, that's the term that is being used. Um, and you know how heavy that is? This, uh, how much does it weigh? Uh, Do I we have? I have the details. Of that. Yeah, so that's the input. 10.5 uh, kilograms. Yeah, this is going to be massively deployed um, in, in the Comcast network. How does it physically tap in? Does it cut into the wires there, or is there yeah. a separate feed? 
they, they put a splicer and they put a splitter to have a cable connected here ah. in the RF and that provides the power and RF that that overhead cables that carries the RF and power and goes all the way to their CMT. So they have system. to cut the cable, yes. splice it, then splice it, it and then insert it over there. It has a one GPS over here and it's a quasi omnidirectional product. So four antennas that is going to provide you omnidirectional coverage. Wow. Yeah. It's one sector, is it? This is this is one sector, yeah. um, small cell. Small you cell. can pretty much build more carriers as well Correct, with, yeah. around it. Yeah. It's called as the small cell product. This is the 39 gigahertz, 44 hour millimeter wave radio. Um, can blend in, you know, on poles and um, blends in really well. This is um, the millimeter wave product as well, a different variant, um, also known as AU. You have Verizon calls it the access unit. Um, operates in the 28 gigahertz range. So this is a 39 gig version, 28 gig version, and both of them are 44 hour. Um, used in a lot of deployments um, for capacity, um, beamforming benefits, a um, lot of 5G fixed wireless deployments as well. So how much, what is the mix that Verizon has for between 48, 48, so 16, 65? Verizon uses right now 64 to 64R for the C-band. They also use 88R. Okay. We also have an indoor version of the C-band which will be used um, that is a 2T2R indoor C-band product. And they use for LTE 44R Lolo 70850, uh, this one, and AWS PCS. The, and, and the CBRS radios and the millimeter wave radios. So okay. it's a complete end-to-end -end process. Okay. And between these, name, what is the mix? Are majority 64TR and... Yeah, uh, majority 64 to 64R because it eliminates all your RF jumpers to the antennas. Correct. Right now they are bringing in 88R, um, okay. which which does have, you know, um, I would say right now it's 90% is to 10%, okay. but it just depends uh, how they want to use yeah. it. Yeah. So, this, this, uh, that one, should, sorry, the Compa Macro, the actual unit that you see over there, mm -hmm. the same one that you have over here, Okay. Same unit. That one is running on 39 gigahertz. This one is running 28. Remember what uh, Alu presented to you guys? The new one, the new dual band. The new dual band will be exactly the same size both with them. both bands. So that's why it's twice the savings. Save the energy twice and you have 100 and 0.6. Dual personality, LTE and NR. So, so these are the indoor products. Um, this is a 2T2R millimeter wave. We have it in 39 and 28 gigahertz both. So pretty much blends in very well on the ceilings or on the walls and provides the indoor millimeter wave coverage and capacity needs. Um, we also have a 850 and PCS version. Um, it, it pretty much, these link cells, link up rows, uh, and the C-band variants as well interface very well with the link up row. Um, so you can pretty much cover indoor radios connected to this, which acts as a hub and achieve that, you know, capacity and coverage needs in an indoor environment. Are those PoE or is that just for networking? Yeah, this this is an Ethernet interface okay. um, that would go over over to that. Yeah, yeah. support seven, is... seven radio units for chassis. Yeah. That's, so, that's an RHU20, support seven, and you can cascade three of those. Oh, I see. So it's PoE, right? Power yeah, internet. power internet, yeah. correct. That's what it's called, active DAS. Yeah. yeah. This is the radio interface unit, works with the DAS subsystems. So JMA, Corning, Spider Cloud, um, all the DAS vendors, we interface this unit with the DAS subsystems. We have it, this is an example for a 700 AWS. We also have a 850 PCS variant, so pretty much covers those frequencies that the operators have. Um, operates in a simplex mode or a duplex mode, depending on how the DAS system is configured. For example, um, you see that there are two paths here for band two, and the first port is a transmit-receive port. So if you just connect one of them, 
that is your simplex operation. But if you have to connect TX RX separate on what is there on the DAS subsystem, then you are in the duplex mode. So this is 1T1R, 2T2R possibilities, but uh, you have to pretty much interface them with the DAS systems and, and make it work. Very well deployed in indoor uh, solutions. Also, you know, stadium kind of scenarios as well are making use of a lot of DAS deployments. Mm -hmm. These these are the radios. Are these deployed? They have pros? A lot of them. Okay. Hospitals, stadiums, okay. Okay. indoor locations, um, works with JMA, Teco, uh, all the uh, mm -hmm. DAS vendors. Okay. And so, so part of the units that Alok mentioned, the Lambert for going up, yeah. it's that one, yeah. and the Link cell. Yeah, okay. And we also have a C-band version of this indoor RIU for the C-band. Um, so Verizon is also, you know, they want to make sure when you're outdoor, you're on ultra wideband. When you come indoors, yeah. the mobile, you know, is camped right. on to the same frequency. So that's that RIU. Are you guys doing anything with Verizon business on the the uh, like stadiums and event venues? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not with Verizon business though. Those are Verizon. under the Verizon network. Under the Verizon oh, the network. network. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. We do not have a reseller agreement with Verizon Business. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. do. I mean, all this in the network are deployed in the stadiums, um, indoor hospitals, um, you know, offices. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Last one is the baseband unit. Um, this is the most advanced CDU 50, capable of both 4G and 5G. Uh, you see the main processing card here and the channel card. Um, pretty much all the radios that you see uh, here, we can interface it with. So this is the baseband unit, CD50, LTE and NR capable. And this is the VDU server. There are two of them here, um, Cox server. This one is a Dell. Um, has the interface cards right here. Uh, you're going to have a backhaul, ILO port, and pretty much uh, in some deployments you will see a direct connectivity from the PC cards to the radio. In <coughs> some of them you may not want to do that, um, just depends on the deployment. Um, you may have the cell side router connect to the radios, but this VDU have been used uh, widely for DSS, C-band deployments right now, and in future we'll also use for the UADPF, uh, which is going to be a combined LTE and 5G. And what, what, you asked, <coughs> what is the capacity of this VDU? I mean, I don't know how it's throughput, how you define it, or yeah. and how many capacity sizes it can be? Capacity is going to be the same, dependent okay. on the bandwidth. Okay. Uh, the throughput is going to be dependent on the bandwidth. Yeah, the course, cell yeah. capacity is going to be dependent on how many cells you have, Correct. which is going to be the standard number. So how do you define the VDU capacity? You need one of these blocks or four or six? Oh, I see. So yeah. right now, this VDU um, for the C-band, we, we have one VDU that supports three radios. Three radios, okay. Um, and um, mm -hmm. each of them um, can right now do up to 60 megahertz uh, of bandwidth. Okay. That is the 64 to 64R product. Okay. Uh, for DSS, uh, but but the cells, we can also do it in bisector mode, trisector okay. mode. Okay. So basically, uh, you can have a profile that is capable of supporting six cells per VDU or okay. 12 cells per VDU. Um, those are known as the half cell profile and full cell profile that we call. So it's it's flexible. And half cell is in, in terms of bandwidth? Or? No, no, no. In terms of the number of cells that okay. it can create. I see. Plus, um, the, the video has all the pod based technology. Mm -hmm. um, you can also increase the pods to build <coughs> more cells up to 24, as okay. in when you add more pods. Pod is. Blades, it's an internal, um, you know, um, in the architecture processing. Oh, I see. Um, Additional zeros, yeah, basically. In the architecture. Okay. So that's that's how it, it it can dynamically scale up to twenty-four cells. Oh, I see. Yeah. So if you have multiple bands, then it is two cells, right? You can put you can put up to four bands um, one cell. depending on on um, on one cell, it will be one frequency. Okay. On 
the same sector, you can second, have a different frequency. That is a second cell. That, that will be a second cell. I it see. will be so, counted so, unique. Okay, so if you have two by double two band deployment, then one site with three sectors will be six cells. Six cells. You need one one of these boxes for yeah, that. You can do one easily six cell deployment I with see. a half profile, 12 cell deployment with a full profile. If you add more uh, pod in there, which is also scalable, okay. uh, you can go up to 24. I see. In one video server. Okay. So, so this is one video server, right? Or this is two video two servers. servers. Okay. This is just one. Okay. Right here. Okay. But the way it's uh, shown here is there are two power inputs right. here. Okay. So two servers are shown in this deployment. So this one can support then, if it is single band, uh, three sector, four of them. Yeah. Is this box correct? You, you, you can you can build as many cells as you want to even achieve carrier aggregation. Um, so right now we you know if you're doing um, LTE. Uh, you can build up to seven carrier aggregated cells. If mm -hmm. you're doing CBRS, you can go up to four carrier aggregated cells. So I can build 12 cells for CBRS with four four carriers aggregated together, 20 megahertz each carrier, okay. leading up to eight, 80 megahertz. That's how Verizon reaps the benefits of uh, carrier aggregation. But the more uh, bands you have, more carriers, you need more processing. You right? need more processing. So yes. then you, you keep adding uh, these it things? Will, it will reach a limit okay. up to its cell profile that, okay. that can be maintained. And after that, you will you have no choice but to scale a different yeah, okay. network. Okay, okay.